Welcome to the Fitness Mindset Podcast. My name is Amanda Mikolev and I am the head coach and director for Divine Physiques Coaching here in Melbourne, Australia. This podcast is for anybody who is struggling to stick to their fitness journey and is searching for a far more practical set of tools and strategies on how to stay the course long term because most of you should all know by now that motivation is in fact nothing more than a temporary emotion. What you will learn from any of the guests on the show is that they have all battled with their own setbacks and have had to learn practical means on how to come out on top and succeed. I hope this podcast helps you along your own journey and I thank you for tuning in today. Hey guys, welcome back to episode number 10 of the Fitness Mindset series. So I'm here now with Grant Tazzy Brown. Mate, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, We're here at Boxing Fit Port Melbourne. So I have actually been following Grant online now for probably a couple of weeks now as my partner actually put me onto your stuff. Yep. So been following all your content and seeing all the good things that you've been doing with your members and and here at um, Port Melbourne. Um, and true fact, you've only been in Melbourne for six months now. Yeah, six months. Yeah, it's yeah. um, it's been sort of uh, yeah, it's been like a short time, but like things are really growing in that time, so I'm really happy. Yeah, cool. Can't wait to actually have a chat to you about that and and what you've been doing to promote yourself yeah. and, and all that sort yeah. of stuff. So, uh, just quickly, so professional boxer previously. Yeah, yeah, I was amateur, yeah. then I turned professional. Yeah, yeah, had a, yeah. Had a twenty year career, so that was um. Give my my life and soul into boxing, and it's all I've ever really do. ever really known as a young kid. My father and grandfather are both champions, and um, followed in the family footsteps. So fantastic! So talk about your boxing record. Let's talk about the amateurs first. Yeah, yeah. So amateur, I had um fifty fights, forty two wins, eight losses. Um, I represented the Tasmania, um, won eight state championships, four Golden Gloves titles, and the highlight was representing Australia. Fantastic. Um, in ninety nine at the Oceania Championships in Tahiti. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in the Olympic 2000 um, AOS um, squad, and but I missed selection for the 2000 Olympics. So mm-hmm. there was a, some great fighters in that time, James Swan, Michael Cassidy. So, you know, it was always going to be tough. And after Sydney, um, I turned pro and uh, went up with uh, Jeff Fennick and Billy Usain and um, was up there with the, probably the best team um, at the time in Australia. The boxing was just booming back then. Yeah, what was that like, training with those boys? Yeah, look, I was sparring Costa Zoo, um, my dear friend yep. who I visit in Russia regularly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, training alongside him, uh, Victor Chinian, obviously four-time world champion, Danny Green. Um, yep, awesome. And the, the Del Hussein and the Hussein Hussein, two of the best. And just, it was an elite team, so... Um, Saki and Bicker as well. Yeah, huge names. I was the, the baby of the team and um but yeah, it was just awesome. I learned a thing guys and yeah. And now I learned what of um also my training, like of the technique side of things of I pick a lot off them guys and um yep. I put yep. into my own program, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh okay, so any sort of did you box any names that sort of uh my my people watching might be familiar with? Um I'm not sure. Like the, as an amateur, the biggest names I thought was James Swan and Matthew Pauley. They were both Olympians and um, yep. Commonwealth representatives. They were really good back then. Mm-hmm. What um, was that like? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was great experience. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, Shane Braslin was uh, an Australian four-time Australian champion. I beat him twice. That was you know some good fights. As a pro, um, Brendan Batty, Nigel Hammond. Um, you know, fought some good local guys. Yep. Um, had eight pro fights for um, eight wins, four knockouts. Uh, should have had probably 20, 30 fights. It was trouble getting fights at the time. Had a couple of guys pull out on short notice. And the yep. last one was on the mundane Daniel Gill on the card in Brisbane where my opponent um, failed his blood test the day of the fight. Like his right. results come back and the fight got cancelled. It was on pay-per-view when I trained for That's 12, a bit rough. 12 weeks, lost 10 kilo and it shattered me. And, um, yeah, so, look, um, I decided to call it a day then after after a long career and, um, you so know, when was that, mate? Like two thousand and nine. Yeah. Two thousand and nine. Okay, so you haven't had a fight since then. Not since two thousand and nine. Yeah. Right. So what have you been up to since then? Um, my very dear friend, um, you know, one of my brothers and uh, Luke Jackson. Yep. Um, uh, Olympic captain, two thousand twelve London, uh, two time of Commonwealth Games, a bronze medalist here at Commonwealth Games in Melbourne, and recently just fought for the world title against Carl Frampton. I was training Luke. Um, as an amateur, and then me and Billy are saying both co-trained Luke as a pro, and I promoted him down in Tasmania. So mm-hmm. I, I probably a lot, lot of effort into Luke's career. Um, also, some other pro fighters, my cousin Johnny and Gary Brown, mm-hmm. Joe Corner, Matthew Trifford, and um, I opened up a gym in 2012 for Trouble Youth right. in Tasmania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in the western suburbs there in Moona, and um, 
yeah, it was a really great. We decked it out really nice, and um, and um, yeah, look, I was um, looking after the kids out there, and most of my passion was um, you know, the troubled ones, a lot of the indigenous kids as well, and um, because I'm obviously very close to Anthony Mundine, he came down as a guest yeah, several that. times, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, also, a sparring partner. I sparred him a couple of times. And What's that like? He's so fast. He's yeah, so, he's quick yeah, hands, He's mate. very fast. Yep, but, um, yep. So I was down there working with kids and I was very passionate about it. And um, for two years, um, I went pretty hard. And a um, couple, of, couple of good stories come out of that gym. A young kid called Sebastian Wells who, um, who was you know, at 10 years old, sort of had a bit of trouble as a kid. But now he's a four-time Australian champion. He's got a full-time job and he's still studying and he's just got a big fight in Tasmania on the weekend. He was on the news last night. That's exciting. So that made me proud. And, um, yeah, so awesome. I put a lot of my time into boxing. Everything sort of has been boxing-related. Even yeah. when I retired from fighting, um, I've been coaching, training, promoting all the events in Hobart, um, you know, doing all the, the shows down there, organising the, the ticket sales and the fights and okay. all that, which is pretty full-on too, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yep, yep. So is there many promoters down in Tassie? No, no, not really. I was well, I was the only one pretty much for 20 years. Right. A um, couple of guys come on board and, and done their own little things and full credit to all the guys, but on a big scale, yep. um, Daniel Gill I promoted, um, Luke Jackson, I've been the only one down here at, at that level, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, yep. awesome. Good stuff. So yeah. we've got a bit of a legend on our hands, guys. Nah, nothing so. like that. <laughs> Just a humble kid from Tasmania. Just someone who likes to give back by the sound of it. Fresh off the fantastic. spirit of Tasmania. <laughs> I landed in Port Melbourne when I haven't left. <laughs> so... Um, so look, you you've developed a nice little following online at the moment. Yeah. So just under four thousand followers. Yeah. Yeah. And is that within the six month period? So did you just develop Instagram when you got to Melbourne? I had I had more I had more than that. My ex girlfriend made me delete Instagram. Yeah. So yeah. which you actually lose your Instagram. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so I only started fresh again. But yeah, I had more a couple of years ago, but yeah, I've just yeah. started back recently, yeah. So and it's only really picked up since I really didn't put a lot into Instagram really. It was mm. more Facebook, but um since I got to Melbourne and since I started training people and um, it's been really great. So now I'm sort of getting used to, you know, the momentum of what you do and yep. some of my clients have got some amazing followers and um, so I learn I learn off them as well as they learn off me, you know yes. what I mean? So, yep. so, yeah. So a lot of your followers, do they tag you in their, their um, like say their bios yeah. and their posts yeah. and stuff like yeah. that and has that really helped your Instagram game Of course, traction? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, okay. I've been getting recognised uh, lately at, Certain night areas, the Albion, Bomba, Barock, and just, just casual. Stopping me saying, Oh, you know, we see you train this girl, that girl. Yeah, yeah. I train guys too, but you know, a lot of girls, and um, they've got yeah. big following. So it's sort of, yeah, they see me on theirs, and, and I guess in a short time of six months, I've been managed to sort of make a bit of an impact. Yeah, in Melbourne, Excellent. which is good. Yeah. Excellent. So let's talk about some of your, your um, clients then. So, yeah. Who, like, if we can do, a, like, a cheeky little name drop or a yeah. couple of name drops, who are some of your Instagram influencers that you actually train that um, have some really good followers? Yeah, I mean, Emily Emily Angwin from uh, Channel 7. Yep. She's an absolute champion. Um, you know, I've got Tell from, um, is it Married Saw it? that, Married, Married at First, first Sight. He's a good yeah. mate of mine. Yeah, he's yeah. a champion. So is he single? He's single. I think he's single. He's, he's, on, he's, on, he's, single? he's on Bumble or something <laughs> like that. Whatever, whatever Bumble is. He's talking about Bumble. Now, Tell single. <laughs> yep, yep. I am too, by the way, but that's, that's a different story. <laughs> I'll link those details below. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, then, um, you know, them two probably. Um, but there's been a lot come in. Obviously, Dustin Martin comes in to Mick. I want to thank Mick Hargraves yep. from uh, Boxing Fit Port Melbourne. Without him, this isn't possible. He yep. allowed me to come here and he's been um, right behind me. So without him, you know, I, I appreciate him. Mick and Dustin Good Martin, him are best mates. So Dustin Martin comes in to. I'm I get a Richmond girl. I get Go to take Dusty. him. Woo! <laughs> we're going to take him on the pads every now and then when Mick's yeah. not here, so that's great. Does so, he hit hard? Him, Justin, Dusty can fight. Yeah. That's, that's his yeah. good. He looks a bit rough, Dusty. <laughs> big, uh, Michael Gardner as well, ex-West Coast and St Kilda legend. He's the, the big show we call him. He's a gun. Yeah, yeah. So a few of those guys come in, so sometimes I do a bit with those as well. But that's my clients then, guys. Um, a lot of my girls have got big followings. Um, Estina, um, Charlie. Amy, I mean, you know, some of them have got 50, 100,000, 150,000 followers. And what so, are these girls do? I mean, I know it's not boxing related, but like as coaches, um, I mean, very few can say that they have such a, um, an, an eclectic bunch of people that they yeah, coach. Yeah. So you're very fortunate in that sense. What do some of these people do on Instagram um, that they've gotten such a huge following? Like, what are they promoting, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, a lot of them, are obviously, I mean, they're, they're into the fitness stuff as well. And like my friend Sean from Bondi Sands, he's, he's got, obviously, 
a big business there, so he's number one mm. of my clients. So I've got sort of business, business people it's as well. Love their fakes, hand. Yeah, so yep. um, give you a plug there, mate, Bondi Sands. <laughs> but um, they actually just got um, Kylie Jenner to do a post for him on Instagram. Oh, wow. Which cost him a little bit, I heard. Oh, yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah. And I mean, I've got a lot of nightclub identities. I mean, I started off in the nightclub. That's where I met my first clients. Right. Barack and Bond. Yeah. That's where I started. I was serious. I got off the boat. Two serious uh, nightclubs there. I got off the boat on the, on the Thursday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Went out on the Friday, Saturday, and got my first clients to start fresh on Monday. Right. And that's how I started. So you just networked on the weekend? Networked on my first weekend in Melbourne. How many clients did you pick up in that weekend? I think six. Just from a few drinks, chat. Well, I don't drink either. Yeah, but, well, there you, you know, go. But I um, out. don't drink or do drugs, none of that. You Good know, on I just train. Yeah. But yep. yeah, so I get, get them doing that and done. You know, got them here on the Monday. And then they told a few people, they told a few people, and then Instagram started picking up, and it just went from there. And then it's awesome. I think a lot, a lot of the people like boxing's a great, a great fitness, obviously, the best cardio. Good for self defense, yeah. especially with the females, you know, in this day and age or any day and age. Mm-hmm. And I think the fact that they're learning from a professional boxer to someone that's been there and done it. I yeah. mean, and I'm very hard. Like I'm, I'm fair, I'm firm but fair. Firm but fair. You yeah. know, like I never let them quit. You know, yeah. and I won't ask them to do anything that I haven't done myself fifty times over. Absolutely. So, so yeah. look, I get the most out of them, and um, as I said, I'm, I'm, it makes me so happy to see them all improve. And improve their fitness and get so much better. Yep. A couple of my girl clients um, want to fight. Kirsty Lee, she's got a great following. She wants to fight Amy Maravini. She wants to fight. And these girls are practically mo- they're models. They're beautiful, but they want to fight. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I've seen them. They're yeah, all, guys, you have to follow him online. I'll plug him below. <laughs> but these girls, they, they are literally the token Instagram babe. Mm. Um, all looking gorgeous, perfect, yeah, big great. lips, everything. Yeah. Estina and Charlie, and they hit pretty both, well too. Yeah, yeah and Estina and Charlie, they've both improved that aside. Some of the girls train up to four days a week with me. Like they're yeah. actually obsessed with boxing now. Yeah, they just they watch films, they watch everything. Like and um, That's pretty much how I ended up. Yeah, like, seven years ago, it's yeah. the same thing. Just became it's addictive, isn't it? Yeah, it makes me makes me happy. Makes you a proud coach, and yeah. um, I love seeing them improve. Um, I just picked up a um, yeah, a few more clients. Yesterday, I hit up another seven people, hit me up to start next week. So, um, That's brilliant, mate. Yeah, That's so, brilliant. you know. How, do you, how are you going to cope with all this influx of new people getting ready for summer? Then, Joe, I might have, to, <laughs> might have to hire an assistant, maybe. I, I think so. You know, but, um, so. and That's a lot great. of my clients, they, um, because you know how they go away, a lot of people go away in Europe, Miji, yes. get away from the cold. Yep. A lot of my clients got fit for that. Now they're back. When to get fit again after for the next Euro trip? Or the, or? Oh, well, just to get fit after that Euro yeah, trip, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's good to help people. I mean, end of the day, you know, yeah, you get paid for it, but it's good to. There's nothing like in the results, seeing them reach their goals. Definitely. Whether it's you know body body weight or you know kilos or just improve their technique or their muscle development, anything you know. So absolutely, you know, absolutely. My, my friends have um, got some of the you know the best powerlifters in the world are some of my best mates. So I've yep. done a lot in the weight area as well. So I was benefit to go. I went to Russia last year twice. Right. Yeah. And so how much do you know about the weightlifting side of things? Yeah, I, well, only through a few of my very dear friends. Um, yep. I learned a lot through them guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More so like your, your three disciplines: your, your squat, deadlift, and bench. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But obviously, boxing's always the my heart. number my number one. And yep. Yep. started back training myself too this week, so that feels good. Yeah, that's good. So tell, talk about your training, mate. So what do you do to train yourself throughout the week? Yeah, I mean, look. What's your training routine? Well, the last the last. The last few years has mainly just been weights, but yeah. recently just started back. Obviously, boxing, doing some pad work, um, heavy bag. Um, the Did you miss it? of course, yeah. 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 Um, obviously, the box, the box uh, combo master, which is awesome as well. Yes, that that's really that's good. The one where you've got your all the different pads, pads yeah, yeah. So different heights. Yep. Shout out to them guys too. That's awesome. I was on that the other day, and that, and um, yeah, and then a lot of boxing, and then obviously running. I, I find um, there's nothing like going for a good run. I went for a good run yesterday, yeah, yeah. You know, anywhere between seventeen k. So it's good for your run. mind. It helps you to just clear anything yeah. out. Like if you're a sort of person that overthinks, I think oh, it's excellent. To I just, overthink massively. Yeah, yeah. Look, I used to, but I found that when I was boxing, I'd run my five k's every yeah. single day, six yeah. seven days a week. I just couldn't wait to go for my run every day. Yeah. Thirty degree heat. Yeah, 20, it doesn't it didn't matter. matter. Rain, when you're when you're in a routine matter. and your mind's yeah. set to it, nothing yeah. matters. Absolutely. It's like when I was at like school, like everyone goes to parties and I didn't go to my um my school you leave us dinner. Yeah. I didn't celebrate my eighteenth for my twenty first because I had boxing fights coming up. So yeah. I was at one track we were being successful mm. that they couldn't even 
it didn't matter. Like they couldn't test me. They couldn't even like it wasn't even an option for me. I didn't want to go out to parties and be around alcohol or, or drugs or smoking or marijuana. So very I was just, focused. I just had tunnel vision from the age of like thirteen onwards, and I went to my school reunion a couple of years ago. Mm. And it was sort of it's crazy. A lot of us said, "Oh, now we know why you were so dedicated." Like now we we've seen yeah. you watch your progress, and I mean, life's what you make it. I mean, it really is. It, you know, um, everyone's got a story. I had a bit of a battle with depression so when I retired from boxing. I didn't know what to do anymore because I didn't have that date set to get ready for a fight. Yeah, okay. So in those last moments, like before you, you quit boxing, because yeah. um, you sort of stuffed around a bit in terms of fights and people pulling out and yeah. that sort of stuff. So yeah. did that mess with your mindset a bit? Well, if you train for eight to, tw- you know, eight to 10 to 12 weeks and you lose so much weight, because boxing... Especially with the smaller guys, I used to fight a lightweight. Yeah, you got to maintain a certain weight, so I always have what to drop weight down. What is that for people that, that don't know? What is that? Uh, well, my first few pro fights was fifty eight point seven as a uh, super feather, but most of my fights yeah. are at lightweight, sixty one kilo. Yeah, so that's right. quite light. It's quite light. Yeah. Especially I walk around at about seventy. Yeah, so yeah. I have to drop down. I mean, you do all the hard work. You you dot the eyes, cross the you know, cross the T's, and you, and you do all that, yeah. and then obviously sudden the day of the fight or the day before the fight's cancelled. I reckon it's like maybe torture. maybe going in your wedding in, the, in your bride not turning up to the wedding maybe yeah. you know what I mean something <laughs> like that it. something like that definitely is there anyone out there that has boxed uh, and I know I can speak for myself too like it's it is the most intense style of training ever like you can go and play footy you can go and play tennis and and do powerlifting bodybuilding but as soon as you get any of those sports people to come and box. It's a true uh, testament to see where a person's real fitness level is at. I always, I always, I always say, I always say, not just the fitness, but in boxing, especially when you're fighting, boxing's a very honest sport. I, I admire anyone that gets in the ring, yeah. even if it's a, an amateur fight, a corporate fight, or actually a professional fight, because yeah. you can bluff your way through life, but when you're in that ring with someone else facing you, there's one-on-one, there's no bluffing. If you haven't, Absolutely. If you're not yeah. what you say you are, you're going to be found down in front of hundreds of people. Mate, put it there. That's, you know what? And this is why I'll always love boxing is for that reason. It's honest. Absolutely. And anyone that you meet in the boxing industry is just that, honest, down to earth. That's it. We know who we are. There's nowhere to yeah? hide in the, no. in the ring. Your, co- your no. coach can help you, but can't help you actually. You know, you're in the, that's it. It's up to you. Yeah. If you're yeah. not on your game that day or you maybe you didn't go for extra couple of Ks run, you might have had that cheeky night out and had a couple of drinks when you shouldn't have or you might have not done the extra sit-up or done the extra round sparring. You're going to know about it. You're going to know about it. So I used to sort of go into it. When I used to walk to the ring with my coaches, I used to walk to the ring and i think in my head, I've done it all. I've, I've done all the running. I've done. I've had the early nights. Yeah. I've done it because it all's got to come in together. It's yeah. no use you know, having the training but no, no sleep. It's yep. no use having all the sleep and no training. It's no use having all the diet and no training, all the all the training and no diet. It's all got to blend in together, yep. and on the night it's got to come together. And sometimes it doesn't. If you get beat by a better fighter, you get beat by a better fighter. But don't get beat because you haven't done that hard work. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, definitely. Like, the, the preparation is, it's key. is key, it's key for everything. And whatever the outcome is... It, it will be what it is. Like, there's always going to be someone out there that is fitter, faster, stronger 100%, than you. 100%. 100%. It's not much yeah. you can do. I mean, but that's where you learn yeah. and you take it to the next thing. But so as long as you know that, you know, you gave it your all yeah. and, and, you, and you, you left it all out there. But, I mean, well, football, football is amazing. But, I mean, you've got 17 other blokes, 18 other blokes. If you lose, you lose together. As a team, yeah. But as right. boxing, you lose. And there's another good saying that um, when you win a fight, you know, everyone cheers you and they carry you out of the ring. But when you lose... You're taking the bandages off with by yourself with your teeth. There's yeah. no one around. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's a big and that you know, that's just part of life. You know, when you're on yeah. top, everything's great. When you when you maybe not, things aren't as good, but you learn who you are, you learn who your friends and family are and yeah, yeah. you've got a good support, you know, network like I've got, I'm blessed, you know what yeah. I mean? I've got amazing parents in Tasmania, some great friends there, and got some good friends here now too. I've really Met some good people since I've been in Melbourne, and um, no doubt. Look at oh, your personality, oh, oh, mate. Oh. <laughs> Great personality, no, very, you. very, you seem very kind. Um, again, I will plug your details below. Yeah, but you guys need it. to watch what he does because he is very encouraging, especially with his clients and especially with these female clients too. Like they get in there, they they work really hard, so they yeah. look like they just they know what they're doing. I've got, a, I've got a good, I've got a good bond. Like I mean, if you yeah. spend that time with someone, you're going to build a relationship, and I've got some good bonds with a lot of my girls, and um. 
it's it's great, you know, like they can fight in me, obviously about different things, but I mean, mm. they come in, this is their, they tell me that this is their outlet, boxing is their outlet, they come yeah. to me and they know once it hits that time that I'm going to see Grant or Tassie, I'm going to train with him, and you know, and it's, it's good to know that I'm sort of making an impact on their life, you know what I mean, because we all have our own issues and problems in life, Yeah, definitely. if I can get them to switch on for one hour and block all that out, and I feel like I'm doing my job, you know, so it's great. Do you feel like you've learned more about what? Women in general? Yeah, definitely. What have you learnt about women since you've been training on? a lot of women? <laughs> <laughs> a little lot. I thought I knew a fair bit, but I didn't know nothing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I've learned a lot, obviously. And, yeah, look, I mean, all different things. I sort of can't pinpoint anything in particular, but it's just, yeah, it's just it's just great. And it's just good to know that um, I, I personally don't see the effect I have on people. Like, I, I just, I'm just me. Yeah. But I don't I don't see it. But what they tell me, the, what some of the stories they tell me, like, I'm sort of really changed their life, and I just, I, it's sort of really humbling. Like, I don't really. You don't realize your effect. Yeah, on someone. like yeah. it's more than just yeah. a business where you just come in and, oh, good day and see you later. Like, it's really, yeah, you know, especially when you see them hit their goals and, and start feeling good about themselves. Because mm. some mm. of the girls are so beautiful, but they don't see it, which is crazy. So, yeah, so I mean, like, a lot of these women that you do coach, like, they are, yeah. Quite pretty, yet yeah. would you say they're quite insecure? But boxing has boxing helped them? Definitely, deal with a lot of them. Yeah, not all, but yeah. some, some, some are. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's just yeah, it's just different, you know. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I, I accepted I wasn't um, born like Leonardo DiCaprio a long time ago, so so I accepted <laughs> my 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 faults, but uh, I learned to grow with my my conversation. <laughs> I think so. Well, where you think you may like <laughs> your looks, you certainly make up for in personality. I have so, to. Yeah. I have to. That's it. <laughs> And you know what? And it's having that authenticity in your business. And as a person, yeah. I think whether it's in business or away from the ring, you are who you are. Yeah. And that's what people love. Yeah. And, that, and that's all. That's that's all I've ever lived by. Like I am who I am, and it's not for everyone. Yeah. But I mean, look, I think it was if everyone liked everyone, it'd be a boring world. Yeah. You know Definitely. I mean? Definitely. That's why I like my boy Anthony Mundine because he's a bit controversial. But um, he's not afraid to stir the pot. Yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, yeah. I'm not quite on that scale. But at the yeah. end of the day, I am just me and take me as I am. And if you, if, you know, I'll, I'll do my best to help anyone. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you know, and, and that that's all I can do really is be the good best stuff. version of yourself. And that's yeah, it, brother. that's good. That's good. So where to now? Like. So you've been here for six months. Yep. Um, what are your long-term, or say six to 12-month plans here in Melbourne? Yeah. Do, you, do you intend to stay here for a while? Yeah, yeah this is my home now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I went back to Tasmania two weeks ago to visit my mum and dad. And yeah. look, I, Tassie is obviously in you know, my heart, where I'm from. But at this stage of my life, I drove around and, and I actually had to think to myself, what would you be doing right now if you wasn't, if you was here, what would you be doing? And, and I, I really couldn't think of much. And I'm sort of, this is now... This is home. Yeah, my home, and um, so you settled in really well then. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah like cool. a, yeah, and like um, you know, and I just want to grow my business to the point where I've got no spots available. Yeah, I'm sure you get there. Point where I have to maybe bring someone else on. Yeah, and and then just and just keep enjoying, you know, the results of of um, you know, seeing people improve their lives and improve their fitness and and their mental health, you know, as well. Good you stuff. know, yeah, That's so good, well done. Yeah, so, so you've been boxing for twenty years now. Yeah. And like anyone who's growing a business, like will know that it's a lot of hard work yeah. for a lot of time. Yeah. And for a long time, you may not even be recognised or noticed yeah. for the hard work that you do. So, how long would you say? When did you feel that your business or your reputation or or anything like that really grabbed traction for you? So you did. You had this the boxing uh, gym back in two thousand and twelve. Yeah. Yeah, the gym like that was a bit different. I mean, like, of course, I I was out there to help kids, and I didn't market it for personal training or corporates with money. I was literally just um, almost like a charity. Well, business. I was. I, I couldn't. At the end of the day, after two years, I couldn't afford to keep paying the rent. I, yeah. I funded it myself, and yeah. um, and you know, and, and I, I just didn't want to take. Anything, you know what I mean? It was just such a, it was like a family. Yeah. And, and yeah. The, the mothers used to come and talk to me and if they had kids had, I said if the kids had a rule, if the kids were giving their parents grief at home, then they'd miss boxing. I wouldn't, like I'd tell them straight, you behave at home or yeah. I won't train you. And like they used an to, well, yeah, I had yeah. that influence on them and, um, mm. because you've got to talk straight to the kids, you know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, so I've got a knack with that. Something I want to get back into too, like I don't want to just all be about, yeah, the business side of things. I want to get back into that in Melbourne as well because that's my yeah. passion. It's helping the yeah. kids, yeah. especially the ones with the trouble ones, and show them, you know, look, if you go that road or that road, 
well, you know what what these results are here the different things that could happen and yeah and I mean um so that one down there was different um I mean the boxing promotions I really excelled at I had a, a gift with that to to be able to fill a venue with two thousand people in three months time and just start from scratch mm, mm, mm. um it's it's just from here pen to paper and into action yeah so uh, that's something I really I really love doing and. Um, yeah, I don't know if it'll ever really be appreciated down there as much, but those that know, know. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So and, you feel um, like you've developed a better reputation here in Melbourne? Feel like it, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit of a rock star now. <laughs> no, nah, not rock star. Some people do call me that, but I don't. I'm not taking that. I won't accept it. I've got to say yeah, humble and grounded. Humble. Yeah, good But, I mean, yeah. I look, look, I love my hometown, but it's harder to get recognised down there. It's yeah. harder to people appreciate you. And I think that's more of a thing where you don't know what you got till you lose it. Why do you think that is so? I don't know. Maybe small town mentality. Yeah. You know what I mean? is a small town mentali- mentality? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean. Do people try and box you in? Yeah, I, I think. I, I don't know if this is, and this is totally honest right now. Mm. I don't know if it's an Aussie culture. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you know, other nationalities, but. Or is it a thing where people. A lot of people don't like to see people doing better than them. Or they judge. Or they think they might be doing better than them, even if you might not be. And they, yeah. they sort of, you know, there's a jealous thing and the hater thing that comes into it. And, yeah. and, and you know, you get a lot of that when you're on the way up. And, and my dad always told me, remember people on your way up because you might see them on the way down. Yeah, my mum used to say the exact you know what I mean? same so, thing to me. Yep. So, so a lot of people, like, they don't really know you, but they, they assume that you might be like this or that. And, and I'm, I'm easy to talk to, you know. I'm approachable yeah. always, even at the peak of my boxing when I was in the spotlight fighting on Fox Sports. I was always grounded, you know, but yeah, I mean, yeah. um, I think I don't know if it's a small town thing or an Aussie thing or just enjoy or just a general life thing. A lot of people, I don't I think know. It's a general thing. I don't think yeah. it's a nationality thing. Like, no? uh, look, Aussies. Uh, look, I'm of European background, yeah. and this is of no racial um, <laughs> stab whatsoever. Yeah, you're Aussie, aren't you? I'm a full skip. Full skip. I'm a full you Aussie. sound like a bit of a wog, but that's all right. <laughs> Do you get that? People, my old coach. <laughs> I get told like I talk like Jeff Fennick, my old coach. I was reading. <laughs> You can pass for, for an Italian, easy. I, I get, I get said Italian. Yeah, I get, but I, I was around, I was around yeah. Jeff for ten years, so I get a lot of that. But I mean, my my brother, I love him. And, yeah, uh, yeah. But like, yeah. So look, um, I guess a lot of my friends are Lebanese, Italian, Greek, and yeah. um, and been up in Sydney for so long at a young age. So yeah. And again, back to what we were saying, yeah. I don't think it's an Aussie thing. I just think it's a. Unfortunately, it is a people thing. Yeah. You know, like I'm the opposite. I want to see people do well. I want to see people do better than me. I want to see people do great. Like I, I know. You know, like yeah. I'm the first person to message. A lot of my mates play AFL from Tasmania. Yeah, yeah. When they've been selected on the draft, I'm first person to text them. My mate Tim Payne's the Australian cricket captain. I used to train him back in Tassie. Have you always been that way? Always. Yeah. Always, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I'm, cause I'm, con- I'm secure in myself. I wasn't the best fighter. I was never going to be a world champion. Yep. Um, and you're okay with that? You I'm seem like you're okay I'm with okay. that. I'm okay. I knew that on my day I could beat most guys, but I was never a star. But, hey, I'll give everyone a run for their money and I never quit. But uh, So I'm happy with what I can accomplish. So I'm happy in myself. So I want everyone to do well. My brother Luke Jackson was in, over there in Ireland fighting Carl Frampton in front of 30,000 Irish. <laughs> I could feel the shots. I could feel the rib shot. I was with him. You know, and, um I don't, you know, I want generally, that's something, I think that's the way people should be. Absolutely. Especially absolutely. your friends and people yep. close to you, you know, like. How do you think people can become more self-assured, more more secure within themselves? Well, I don't know, man. People need a hug. <laughs> they need a hug. <laughs> they need um, someone to, to talk to them. And some people I don't think will ever matter. I think yeah. some people are just that way. And I mean, just like, the, it's just the way it is. But yeah. No, people just need to and just be happy and embrace things and stop worrying about what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Worry about what you're doing. Worry about your inner circle and your family and your friends and your loved one and your girlfriend or your wife or your husband or, or whatever. That's it. Don't worry about who's doing that because, you know, they're not worried about what you're doing. Trust me. No. You know what I mean? It's the same concept. Of stay, in like, your, stay in your lane. That's it. Stay in your lane. Totally. Billy, you're saying that's, your, that's yours. Bill, stay in your lane. <laughs> it's the same like if people walk into gyms um, and, you know, that they haven't walked into a gym ever yeah. or, you know, they're a few months in and yep. they feel – they still feel insecure to walk yeah. in because they have this perception that others are watching them. Yeah. How do you encourage someone to overcome that? I don't know. Just be, just be, just be confident in yourself. I mean, um, just know, believe in yourself. Know that you're a good person, and, and just, um, and just don't think anyone else is better than you. Don't. I mean, don't think you're better than anyone else, but don't think anyone else is better than you. Like mm. we're all the same. We all, and it doesn't matter religion, nationality. I'm, I'm friends with everyone, every nationality you think of. And most of my 
you know, most of my family, all different cultures. And mm. we all, we're all one of the one sun, under the one moon, under one stars. We all sleep yeah. at night. We all go to the bathroom. We all, we all, you know, we do all do whatever. So, yeah. like, yeah. it doesn't matter. So that's the whole thing. And I think a lot of the, the world, if there was more people talking, there'd be less wars and less violence. 100%. Because we're, we're all the same. Like, yeah, yeah just, just, you know, even if you don't like someone, just, just ignore them. But if you say hello, be happy, smile. I think people yeah. need to give others the benefit of the doubt. Like sometimes, yeah. like as a coach too, and I don't know about you, but like you can easily pass judgments on clients around you too. But yeah. we don't probably don't realise that they might just be intimidated, for example. Yeah. And unless we actually approach them and start talking to them, we might think, geez, this bloke this guy's actually a good bloke. Hundred percent, hundred percent, you never know. That's why you should never judge people and yeah. And the thing is too, like even like as a, you never know what What's going through some what's happening in that person's day? Yeah. So that's why like it doesn't take much to say I'll always be nice to someone because you don't know what's going on in that person's life at that moment. Mm. Their 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 whole life could be just crumbling. So so it doesn't hurt to have a smile and say hello. Yeah. Like that, how much does it hurt? Yeah. Well, how much. Like, how's your day going? Yeah. Like you know, like you know, I love seeing people just around Port Melbourne just have a smile on, on Bay Street. Just good day. You know, like it's a nice day with summertime. Be happy. Smile. Like, yeah. Be friendly. You know, be friendly. Yeah. And you know? it makes a person stay. It's attractive. Yes. It's it's you know whether it's a male or female, it's attractive aura. Definitely. You know? Definitely. I feed off yeah. that stuff. You know, so yeah, it's um it's good. Let's talk about some mindset stuff. Yeah. And then we'll just wrap it up. Basically. Yeah. So what do you do to prime your own mindset? Do you have any? Do you have any particular people that you follow online that you listen to that really motivate you, or that you just you learn things from? Whether it's boxing, fitness, mindset. How do you prime your mind? Um, so I mean, are we talking before social media or, or now? Currently, it doesn't matter, mate. However, I mean, you've done it. In well, life I mean, or even a, now. Well, back in my day, <laughs> there was no social media. <laughs> we had books and stuff. We had we used to. <laughs> I had a mate who used to write letters to that lived in Melbourne from Tassie. We used to write letters with pen pals. Ah. We'll both boxes and say, how's your training, brother? Are you going to nationals? And we used to do that sort of thing. Awesome. Eh? So we'll, support each other that way. Yeah, but I mean, um, the thing is, um, I mean, I've always had a strong mind. I've always, once I switch on, that's it. I'm yeah. going to accomplish that goal. Mm. Um, you know, so, I mean, I just used to visualise it in my head when I'm running. Like, you know, I'm going to win this fight. I'm going to make the state, the state team. I'm going to make the national team. And... And that was the high point, you know, being handed my green gold truck at the AOS. Mm. You know, that was, I thought, now it doesn't matter what you've done, I've, I've done my goal, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I just used to just, like, just visualise it and just believe in myself and and know what it takes to get there. Okay, I've got to do three months of training, I've got to diet, I've got to do this, I've got to, you know, say no to the dinners and say no to the, the going out. sacrifice. Going out with girlfriends or whatever, you just you just say no. And a lot of a lot of my relationships over the years have had that problem with that. The, yep. That you know you can't just do this and that. You gotta you gotta sort of switch on and, and you know and have that tunnel vision. You know, so yeah, yeah. Um, with social media, I mean, um, yeah. Look, there's a few people. I mean, look, you know, I've always idolised Muhammad Ali before he passed away. So that was just one thing, and he I felt a lot of him, not just as a boxer, but as a person, mm. for what he stood up for. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, Obviously, my former coach Billy is saying he's like my mentor. I talk to him a lot, and, and I look a lot of his videos and what he's doing with his pad work, and because I try and sort of be very similar to him and what Where's he does. Billy, Billy's, Billy's at Body Punch Gym with Kemba. Yeah. Yeah. So he's you know one of the best trainers in Australia, one of the best in the world. Yeah. Is that uh, New South Wales? Yeah, in Sydney. Yeah, Lakemba. Yeah. yeah. So yep. he's cool. trains Lauren Eagle, Luke Jackson, Paul Fleming. Mm -hmm. He trained Billy Dibble. You know, I was going to say Billy trainer, yep. yeah. He's yeah. trained he's trained them all, you know, Danny yeah. Green, Vitachi. Billy, ah, you know. uh, with the beach. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Him. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, one, one of my, one of my, yeah. one of my best friends, you know what I mean? So I, I feed a lot off him. Yes, yep. He's only one phone call away regularly. That's um, awesome. Yeah, Costa Zoo, who I idolise, he was, he was my, my inspiration and obviously now I visit him in Russia and I'm very close to his, his son, Tim Zoo. So he's, so Tim's coming up. Tim, in, the, in the boxing, Tim, I'm seeing Tim on Sunday. Um, Tim is uh, Tim's going great. He's uh, undefeated at 10, 11, and 0. Yeah, it's past yep. me now. How old is he? Um, 22. 22. And he's, yeah, he's got a lot of. Uh, we were in Russia together last June. Yeah, he's yeah. there training with his dad. He's a very great prospect. So, what does he fight at? What weight does he? Fight Light middleweight. She's yeah. about seventy kilo. Okay, 69, cool. 69.9, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, twenty-two fights undefeated. No, no, no. I think he's had eleven pro fights. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, 11 yeah. Pro, okay. yeah. Ten or eleven. Yeah. So, right, I mean, right. he's got you know big shoes to fill, but I believe he's on his own path, his own destiny, and I'll, yeah. you know, I believe he will be world champion eventually. You know, he's yeah. just 
got a great team behind him, and <clears throat> so I mean, I felt a lot. Fight like his old man. Fight similar to his dad. They're mm. different. A bit different. He's a lot bigger than his dad. Yeah. Um, but you know, very similar. Very. Uh, you know, he's got a presence about him. Yeah. Yep. Um, very aggressive. You know. Love to see him fight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he fought. He fought in Melbourne. Rest. He fought in Bendigo. Okay. And he'll be yeah, fighting down here against? again. Um, he fought a guy from Argentina. Right. But he's fighting. Go. He'll fight. He won. Knocked away in the first round. Right. Yeah. He'll fight again next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean. Um, I said, look, I don't really follow a lot of people online as in for inspiration, but you know, um, more more than just the ones I've growing up, like uh, you know Muhammad Ali and the big and, ones, and you know, and obviously you know, Floyd Mayweather. You know, mm. I mean, what he's done in the business part of boxing, you know, like amazing, and you yeah. know, even Conor McGregor. Like, I mean, what he's done in a small time, you know, the money he's made and the influence he's got. You know, what I mean, and just things like that is just amazing. I think there's the sort of guys that you kind of either love. And I'm a big fan or, of I'm a big fan of President Putin as well. <laughs> okay. I chucked that in there. Just, I'm very, I'm very pro-Russian. <laughs> so, what did you think about the latest fight then, Khabib? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of UFC. Um, yeah. Look, you know, it's the first one I've ever watched. Yeah. Believe yeah. it or not. Really? I've never watched it. Look, each to their own. I think when you're a boxer, though, you're very boxing focused. Yeah, so much yeah. It's, it's, I respect yeah. anyone that gets to fight any sort of fighting or any trainer or it's credit to them. Yeah. But yeah. I did know, I did know Khabib would win. Mm. I just knew that he's, you know, he's been, he's hungry and, and Connor's been out for a year and obviously, you know, it's a different lifestyle once you make the money. It's always harder to to sort of stay at that level once you got make the success and he's got it all now. So um, I sort of thought it would happen, um, you know, and congratulations to Khabib. I mean, he's a beast. And Did he get his purse after all that? I don't think he fumble? has, no. No, nah, he got his belt, but yeah. I don't think he's been paid for that fight as yet. But um, I said my time in Russia, going there twice and... I took a, a Russian boxing team for um, for training as well. While I was there, I was, I was a guest. Yeah, right. And that was just sport. I'm at the spot. I wasn't. I didn't go there for that. Yeah. And Tim was with me as well, so that was awesome. So I'm very, I'm very. Um, You've hot. done quite a bit. Yeah, You've done, I've yeah. Been, I've been to about um, 16 countries. Oh, what? Yeah. For boxing. Or all just bo overall. All boxing related. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Um, the Russians, they're a different breed, aren't they? Different breed. So I've heard that because I actually used to work with a PT who was working in Russia for, I think, three years, and he said they were very standoffish with him for a while, and then eventually they just took him in. Is that what the Russian culture is like? Um, oh, yeah, no, I mean, I've only got, I've only got love there. Yeah. I mean, you know... My, was it my, straight away? Were you uh, taken in yeah, straight away? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. My, yeah. my best friend, Wayne Howlett, who's, who's a world champion powerlifter yeah. from Tassie, mm. He's been to Russia about eight times, so he took me with him the first time, and and meeting all his friends and all like the elite powerlifters like Kirill Serechev, world the world champion. Um, yeah, you know, I think eight hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Thor, Amazing. Thor, who's the strongest man in the world. Mm. We train with him. He's got like one point two million. He's, he's off um, Game of Thrones. Andre Miladichev, ah. the the uh, the greatest powerlifter, highest total in ever. Still has a record. Yep, squats like four eighty. Kilo, yeah, he's yeah. got some like seven hundred thousand. Like these guys Massive. are the biggest, name, and they're straight away like family to me. You know what I mean? So I was taken in straight away. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then obviously knowing Costa, Costa showed me around Russia, and he's like a rock star. He's the best friends of Putin, and he's huge. You know what I mean? That's so, insane. That's so like, great. yeah. So right, man. Russia, I didn't find anyone stand off his. You know what I mean? I Maybe it was, it was just him, mate. I think it was amazing. Maybe it was just that guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But, no, it's it's a good it's a good culture. And I'm going back next year. And I actually think I'll go there every year. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. I think I'm going to potentially even have business in Russia. Doing? Boxing. So what would you do in Russia? Would you just go there, the gym? train people, um, bring fighters to Australia, take fighters from Australia to Russia, yeah. which I've already I've already sort of got a channel for that. I've already already got something like that happening. So awesome, good. Yeah, you got to think outside the box, you know what I mean? No, Definitely. You know, being limited to where you are. Yeah, yeah, you, know? you can't always rely, I think... With personal training too, you can't just always rely on those one-to-one -one sessions. Yeah. Fifty plus sessions or yeah. so. It yeah. does wear you out. Oh, yeah. You know, and if you can have, you know, the best of both worlds, where you can obviously diversify the way you yeah. you, you want to box and promote and that's right. earn your money at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, well, so, I've been having some big days like this. It's been crazy and yeah. I don't know for some reason Mondays are sort of quiet. Fridays are sort of quiet, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday I get smashed. Flat out, flat out. So all day, yeah. <laughs> like six a.m. to eight p.m. That's insane. Mm. So, do you? What sort of hours are you working at the moment? So, six till what uh, time? I book via appointment, so it depends. So, sometimes I'll start at six. Mm. Sometimes I'll start at eight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll start at ten. But it then depends. Like I'll go steady all throughout that day. You know right. what I mean? So, okay. Yeah. 
So do you get that big gap in, in the day like most trainers? Yeah, there's that big gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And what do you tend to do in that little gap? Uh, well, now I'm, I'm back training, so I'm, I'll go, for, I'll train. Yeah. Or I'll go into the city or, you know, if I treat, treat myself a massage or maybe a, get my hair cut or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> get a nice little shave. But Nice. Yeah, but yeah, that gap can be a little bit, yeah. Sometimes you appreciate it. Sometimes, you know, you might just foot, foot, prefer to keep going, keep going, back, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, man. So, look, today's been fantastic. So, thank you so much. No, thank you. All right. If people want to reach out and do some boxing with you, um, what's the best way for them to contact you? Would it be Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, um, Instagram, um, Grant Tazzy Brown. Yeah, uh, G- I'll plug that for Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, and just hit me up on, on Instagram and, and that's fine. Yeah, it'd be great. Easy. And he's pretty accessible. So I messaged Grant on Instagram and he replied to me pretty much straight away. Yeah, so, I always get back to good. people yeah. all the time. You know I mean? Good that's, stuff. Yeah. Good. Thanks for um, coming down taking the time to... No worries, To do mate. a little story on little old me. You know, I'm really enjoying these face-to-face interviews. It's nah, I it's great. I my coach last yeah. week face-to-face, so I think it's uh, more engaging for the audience Definitely. to watch as well. 100%. Um, yeah, so is there, do you have a favourite quote at all? Or a favourite song? Yeah, I, I do have one, yeah. What is it? Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Boom. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode 10 of the Fitness Mindset Podcast. We're now available on iTunes, so please search us up um, via the Purple Podcast app that you'll see on your iPhone or Samsung or Android. Anyway, thank you so much, and I hope that you guys tune in for next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you liked the content, please make sure you support the show by giving us a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you are the first to know when a new show is being released. I am trying to get up a new show every single week as I'll continue to bring on interesting guests within the fitness industry who can only bring a lot of value to our listeners. If you're wanting to learn more about coaching with myself, please visit my website at divinephysiquescoaching.com. Thank you once again and we will catch you on the next episode.